well, I'm an idiot. I'm now correcting something that I shouldn't have had to correct because as I was lowering my car, my four x four block on my floor jack rolled. I used my four x four block to push the car up higher than the maximum extent of my floor jack so that I can go all the way up. So when you're taking it off, you put the same four x four block on your floor jack, raise it up, and then you really should just lower your jack stands maybe a few clicks, not all the way, lower the car onto that, remove the block, raise it back up, remove the floor jacks, and then lower the car all the way down instead of trying to do it all at once. I went to start the car after all the work and the battery was dead because it had been sitting for a week. So I was just anxious to push it out, jump it with my van and, uh, and then test it. Now it rolled, the block of wood rolled off and it slammed onto my floor jack right on the exhaust piece. So let me show you. I just take my shot back right there. Now what I've, I've also disconnected it. So it's not gonna blow dirty air into my exhaust. So this will just be clean. I'm just gonna wrap this with some dryer tape. So it's a good tight fit and um, turn it on and spray it down with soapy water. We'll go find an exhaust leak. All right, so I've started removing the bolts uh, from these studs. And as you can see on one of them, the bolt stayed where the actual leak was. You can see I, I broke it off. Okay, there it is, removed. Uh, not surprisingly, you can see the typical discoloration in the gaskets, uh, in the gasket, and then right there, you can see the gasket itself was sort of black. I think it was allowing more heat transfer, and that's why it kind of got discolored. Very easy to remove this. Just peel it off. Now, I have to remove the alternator. This bolt's easy enough, but you're gonna need to go through uh, just to be able to get that one out. Um, gonna be uh, just removing the tension on the serpentine belt here and then uh, take it off. Just find the orientation of that little clip, pull, um, pull it. This rubber boot just pulls back. And then of course you pinch the sides there and this pulls out. Remove the negative terminal from the battery. 10 millimeter, this is just like the starter. After that's removed, pull, and then put that right back on there. It goes through a, uh, a hold, a threaded hole, basically pulls it onto the, the belt. You really don't have to remove all of those bolt holes. I'm doing that so I can remove that whole mount in order to get that out. Okay, now we finally have perfect access. That right there that my finger is on, that is a dipstick which attaches in that hole right there. So if you wanna remove this mount, you'll have to just unscrew the dipstick. I find myself at the end of another day with another lesson learned. Okay, this red outline right here represents the engine block. This, uh, this little center portion right here, that is on that bolt, okay? So mine broke right here, it snapped inside the engine block. So what I've been doing is with my, first I drilled it with the 17 64th bit in order to re-thread it to match what it was already at to accept an eight millimeter uh, stud. But I'm not being very smart because as I drilled it out, I'm trying to re-tap. Well, the, I drilled out essentially very close to this red line, but some of the, this is an aluminum engine block and these are, you know, hardened steel bolts. So I'm trying to thread with my tap over existing threads. So um, I've been toying around all day with just drilling it out larger to a 10 millimeter hole with an 11 32 inch bit. 
and then when I re-thread, um, essentially those will will look like this. You know, they'll be into this hole there and out of the way of these other ones. So I'm going to drill this completely out. Having said that, now we come to the point where we look at our, our two different taps. So these are 10 millimeters, the Harbor Freight kit that I have. Okay, that's the one on the right. And my friend, the mechanic with the larger flutes here, he gave me his, you know, it's a craftsman. So you can kind of see, I'm trying to show the difference in the tips. Um, the tip is what's really important in my eight millimeter. As you can see, it's starting to get chewed up. So I don't know which design is meant to work better. I'm about to drill this hole out with my 1132nd cobalt bit. And I should be able to clean out everything out of this hole then. Well, the uh, Craftsman taper or uh, tap definitely won. So I tried it for about five minutes with mine and wasn't having it. And within about three seconds, this one grabbed. Basically, it's moving like here, and you clear it out. Then it's going to move there, and you clear it out. Then it's going to move here, and you clear it out. So uh, you cannot just go, go, go. Okay, everything is successfully on and tightened. Uh, power steering pump gets put back on first. And of course, you could put a uh, half inch drive in here and ratchet it up while this bolt is loose and the tensioner bolt is loose. And that makes the belt here really tight. And then of course, tighten that and you can let go. Uh, put on the mounting bracket for the alternator. And then the dipstick, the fingers on it. That's just a little dipstick. The alternator has uh, this through bolt that'll go here and start screwing in there. And same drill with the tensioning bolt down there. Um, you're going to want to take these uh, tensioner adjustment bolts that go down there off and get it onto here first. You'll want to take it like this and put that through. And then, of course, put the nut on it. And then you can adjust, um, adjust this end here once the, once the belt's on and it'll uh, fully tension. Okay, when you're uh, tightening the alternator, that back uh, 12 millimeter actually loosens the nut on that uh, through rod right there. And then this 10 millimeter here in the front um, adjusts that bolt. There we go, all the way through. So if, if the 12 millimeter nut on the end of that um, through, through bolt, whatever with the hole on it, if that's fully tight, when you go to tighten this 10 millimeter, it's not going to do anything. Connect that back in there. Put the uh, nut back. Now just uh, connect the battery ground. We are ready. I'll tighten that and then we're ready for, uh, for this. I'm going to slide it up and underneath. Definitely get some anti-seize on those threads sticking out, the three threads on the exhaust manifold. This is a uh, Mal, Molly, however you say that. This is the new manifold gasket. I also bought a whole bunch of these uh, studded bolts, eight by 22 studded bolts that'll go in here. Uh, we're gonna take everything out, including the old gasket. I have high temp, uh, the red goop, the high temp sealant that we're gonna let sit for about an hour, barely, and then as it firms up and you tighten it,
Right down in here is where there's a crush washer, a crush ring gasket between uh, this exhaust piece and the bottom of the manifold. This connection is not leaking. What is leaking is here, and you can see all the old um, red high temp RTV sil a silicone sealant. So this will all have to be, I'm gonna get a plastic putty knife and scrape all that out. There's a manifold gasket brace down here that one side attaches to the bottom and the other to the engine block. Okay, I've removed this. So now this whole thing will come out as you can see, but I'm gonna support the bottom of it so when I pull it out, it doesn't just crash down. All right, so I just use a plastic putty knife so that if I scrape something, it doesn't scour my engine block, but you can see this burn mark clearly um, where the exhaust leak was still happening. We're going to uh, take these studs off first so that I can scrape unimpeded. This is a soft bristle brush here on my Dremel, and I've got it uh, about 15 speed. When you um, get something that hot, it's just gonna melt those little nylon bristles. This one is, uh, it's like a, almost like a sponge. But at this point, uh, it's ready for the new uh, new studs. I'm gonna put the new studs in and prep the uh, gasket. It's just just too big, so I'm gonna go on my drill press and drill that out. Okay. Just want to show you my method for putting these on. Put it on all the way to the nut. Gets that middle gap. And now you'll see it's. Gonna bury itself, and you do not want to over tighten. Once that hits and you feel it kind of bottom, I'm gonna immediately stop it. And go reverse, do that, and then just obviously take that off. All right, as you can see, the uh, gasket is dry fit, and this time there's no buckling. This is what I should have done last time. You're supposed to do it until it starts to squish out. And it obviously is squishing out. And then after an hour, you do it an additional half turn. Um, and then I'll wipe away all that excess, of course. We'll see what happens in an hour. When a word do not describe my joy, there are no bubbles right now coming out.